Let's look at a brief introduction to simple linear regression, and we'll start right away with an example here. Is there a relationship between scores on the empathic concern scale and pain-related brain activity? Researchers investigated this on 16 male-female couples. They asked the female a bunch of questions and gave them a score on the empathic concern scale, measuring their empathy towards others. That's what this variable is right here. Then they hooked them up to an MRI and applied a painful stimulus to the male partner while the female watched and measured this activity in the pain-related brain centers. And we are trying to see simply if there's a relationship between these two variables now. Here we have two measurements, just so we're clear here, two measurements on the same individual. And we have 16 pairs of these measurements. Now we're going to plot this out in a minute and see what this looks like. But first of all, we need to know what we're going to call x and what we're going to call y. Sometimes it doesn't matter which one. But if we are using the model for prediction, we call the variable we're trying to predict the y. And I think in this case, well, it might not matter too much either way. But I'm going to call this activation level the y, because now it's the hard to measure variable that we might want to use for prediction later. And I'm going to call this empathic concern scale my x. And so I've got 16 xy pairs, the first one being 12 and 0 0.04. Here I've only got four of these listed, but I'm just giving the first four rather than making this all messy here. So the first step, what should we do when we've got some data like this? Let's plot it and have a look. Okay, definitely in regression type of settings, you want to plot it, have a look, see what's going on. Now here we've got our x variable, the score on the empathic concern scale, and here we've got our y variable, the activation level as measured by the MRI. And there appears to be some relationship here. There appears to be an increasing trend which looks a little interesting to me, I think, in and of itself. We've got the female partner just being asked some questions and getting a score on this empathic concern scale, and then pain-related brain activity measured by an MRI, and there seems to be some relationship there. I think that's somewhat interesting. And so we might want to ask ourselves things like this. Is there strong evidence of a relationship between that explanatory variable X and the response variable Y? Is there strong evidence of a relationship, or is it reasonably likely to see what we saw there just due to chance alone? Sometimes, also, we may want to use the model for prediction. Not necessarily always, but sometimes we do that. If we have a known value of our explanatory variable x, can this help us predict some value y? We might have an easy-to-measure variable x and a very hard-to-measure variable y, and so it might be very easy to get a value of x to help us estimate this y. So, can we do that? Now, we're going to use... Simple linear regression here. So we're going to assume a linear relationship between x and y. And over here what I've got is this term is saying the mean of y at a given value of x. The true theoretical mean of y at a given value of x. And over here I've got this linear relationship this linear relationship. We've got our beta naught representing the y-intercept. That's my y-intercept. And we've got our beta 1 representing this slope. Now, let's see what that looks like. So over here is our relationship as stated in this given line here. And what are we saying here? Well, we're saying that at a given value of x, so suppose we're down here, this given value of x, then the mean of y at this value falls on this line. And if over here we had a different value of x, well, the mean of y would fall on this line here. Now, the y's themselves, the values that we see, that y variable is not going to always fall on the line. The observed values of y that we see in a sample are going to vary about the line because there is some randomness involved. And so we want to include that idea in our overall model. And we end up with this. This random error component epsilon here, this random error component epsilon representing the fact that these actual y values that we see do not actually fall precisely on the line. They might have this linear relationship with x, but the values that we see are going to vary about the regression line. A little later on, we're going to have to assume some things about that epsilon, but for now, it's just a random error component representing the fact that the y's don't fall precisely on that line. Beta naught and beta 1 are parameter values, values of parameters, the true 
intercept, and the true slope. And like most statistical problems, we're not going to know what those are. And so we're going to want to estimate them. And so we will use our sample data to get the estimated regression line, where here we've got our estimated value of beta naught, and here we've got our estimated value of beta 1. And the hat on the y, we're talking about possibly our predicted value of y, uh, predicted y. And one thing to keep in mind here, I don't have an epsilon term over here because my predicted value of y is going to fall precisely on that line. My observed values of y are going to vary about the line, but my predicted value of y is going to fall right on that line. Now the question is, how are we going to come up with this value and this value? How are we going to do that? How are we going to estimate beta naught and beta 1? Well, we are going to use something we call the method of least squares. Very common statistical type of technique to use, used in a variety of spots for a long, long time, but we'll talk about that later.